And then, preparing for this presentation, I asked myself, why science? <coughs> and then I thought, why? Because science is the thing that gives you the answers. А потом я понял, что наука, потому что наука дает нам ответы на вопросы. So here, for example, I listed things that I'm passionate about. Здесь uh, изображены вещи, которыми я интересуюсь в науке. And that when I was a kid, I was looking for answers. Когда я был маленьким, я искал ответы на вопросы. And science gave me the answers to these questions, particularly. И наука помогла мне найти ответы на эти вопросы. And uh, I had some moments in my life in which I had like the haha moment, the revelation. <laughs> so a moment in which I understood, wow, now we get how it works. And then I see, well, now that they know more. I can work more on it, I can understand, I can study more on it. Two main haha moments. One was my dead fault. And when we, he explained me how electricity is produced. It was like, wow. And that's why I started studying into engineering actually. And the second yeah. How old were you when you got known about electricity? 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 I think about between twelve and eighteen. I don't remember, but at many moments. Yeah, I'm just saying that's why, why. Like this. <laughs> and how, uh, how does electricity is Oh, oh. <laughs> we enter into my field. Aha, отлично. Вопрос по специальности. Oh, yeah, easily. You have to make something turn in a dynamo. Вам нужен двигатель. It's like the, the bicycle dynamo. Ну, например, как в велосипеде, когда вы пользуетесь педали и происходит движение. So you make the, the, the bike turn and there is a, um, an engine that uses magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields for generating a current of electricity. Ну, я не физик, я вам скажу, что там должно что-то крутиться, а потом там магнитные поля и появляется... До того, как крутиться, спросите. До того, как крутиться. Точно. Альтернативная тепловая. Тепловая станция. Альтернатив нормальный, но ты можешь делать это. Альтернативный или какой угодно. А вы на какой? 12 лет. А, окей. Hydroelectric. Hydroelectric. Can you explain further what the electric current is and why it's generated in this circular? We went to a panel after about electromagnetism. Okay, but it's what I want to be in this this conversation. It's it's we're too fun And my second moment was actually my. Physics teacher fault. Следующий момент, почему я решил стать физиком медленщиком, это была заслуга моего учителя физики. Of course, I said fault. Заслуга. And she decided to bring us to a trip. Мы решили отправиться в путешествие небольшое. So we started from my city of Turin. Начали с его родного города Торино. And we arrived at CERN. И прибыли в CERН. And she brought us there to discover the the laboratory. And that was another ah. So I thought it was super cool there. But I never had thought that I would have worked there after. And I was 17. But then 
By drafting this presentation, I was wondering. Когда я делала эту презентацию, я задумалась. Do you have a moment? Есть ли у вас такие поворотные моменты в жизни? I mean, suppose you are already interested in science. Я предполагаю, что вы все заинтересованы в науке. Teaching science, hopefully. В преподавании науки. Why? Do you have a passion for science? Так почему же? Есть ли у вас какая-то страсть к науке? Where did it come from? И откуда она к вам пришла? Как она появилась? Somebody inspired us when we were young. Teachers, teachers, teachers. Do you remember that moment? Do you remember that moment? Do you remember that moment? Well, I can share my my moment. Я могу рассказать свой момент. Yeah, that's that's right. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, when the local um, PC like company um, gave me a whole bunch of um, like rest material like that they couldn't use anymore. So all their garbage material they gave it to me. I was uh, ten years old. And I um, figured out maybe I can do something with it. Ну, может быть, я и мне было 10 лет, и я подумала, я думаю, что я могу что-нибудь сделать с этими материалами, как прочитать. So I built several computers from that rest material, and they all worked. Ну, и после этого я построил несколько компьютеров самостоятельно, и они работали. And I was like, wow, I can do something. И он понял, что он может делать что-то в IT-сфере. That was my advice. So you're 10 years old? Yeah. Okay. Коли я закінчила школу, мені було 16 років, і я думала, куди мені піти вчитися, я не знаю, чим я взагалі хочу займатися в житті, абсолютно не уявляю, я вибирала спеціальність, університети, і я сіла, задумалась, що я хочу робити от кожного дня, подумала, що я просто хочу все життя читати книжки і розказувати про них іншим людям. It's quite what I said. І я подумала, що якщо я вступлю на культурологію, то я зможу це робити. Це був момент розуміння, як що ти хочеш робити в житті? Читати книжки і розповідати про них іншим людям. Цим я, власне, і займаюся. Я преподавала в психічному училищі, і там технології, технології чистого проблеми. Ви хочете не вставити? Ще один колледж, як металологія, щось таке. Ми намагалися через общественне движення внедрять нові технології, в образовательной сфере, поскольку базовое было это предприятие, где готовили мы специалистов. Среди учащихся это были Абсолютно не прикасались к этому движению, поэтому эти предприятия 
there are steps for, uh, there are steps that are popular only among uh, students and uh, young researchers, but uh, not among the directors. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, these uh, preparations don't work. Uh, by the way, 
I will give you the presentation, so you will, you will have all the slides available. I know how you can play with this website and put all the cities that you want. <laughs> but as I, as I will tell you, the fun part for me and for the people that I meet every time they, they come at CERN is to see how those amazing technologies that we developed for research are applied <laughs> into everyday life. It's what we call knowledge transfer. For example, two exam two big, one of, uh, two of the biggest examples that we have at CERN are basically in our pockets every time. So at CERN, the World Wide Web was invented. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I told you it's a discussion. And yeah, for those who came just now, this has to be a discussion, so interrupt me, ask questions, be as much uh, active as possible. Yeah, because... I okay, yes. yeah. of course. Uh, <laughs> you, you told that you work in Geneva. Yes. And uh, do you have free access to particles to accelerate? Uh, I personally don't. <laughs> but uh, when it's again, I. I <laughs> Если вы работаете в Женеве, есть ли у вас свободный доступ к ускорителю частицы? Лично у меня нет. Да, я не знаю. Но в framework, for which if you have an agreement with CERN, you can come and make your experiments at the particle accelerators. Но если вы работаете в CERN и у вас есть разрешение договора, вы можете прийти и провести необходимые для вас исследования. We have already collaborations with Ukrainian universities. И мы полностью готовы сотрудничать с украинскими университетами. I don't know which. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, you can. No, we Thank you. And also the touch screen. Actually, the touch screen was invented at CERN by a guy that didn't want to move any more the analogic valves and um, um, comments, um, controls. Uh, uh, yeah. And in particular, <laughs> actually, what most fascinates me, and actually it's what where I'm working on, uh, are medical applications of some technologies. So we say that we accelerate, we detect, and we compute. And we can use those same three technologies in the medical field. And we are doing it. So, for detection, we can see better tumors, for example, or diagnose better problems in the body. And with accelerators, we can use them for a new type of uh, radiotherapy, much more effective than conventional one. To give you a little bit of the taste of what are the things also you can talk about when you speak about And then we will show you also what CERN can do for you, as I promised. Uh, and the, uh, so quick on medical imaging. <laughs> so, for example, you know, every, I mean, the, the, the most known way of uh, diagnosis is X-rays. And the story of X-rays is super fun because um, Mr. Rodgen in the, uh, in the end of the 19th century, discovered the X-rays. <coughs> and like a few months after, 
he understood that he could make something of it, and he made the first radiography of the hand of his wife. <coughs> that you can see the, the wedding ring. <coughs> and this is also a quick, quick example of knowledge transfer from science to <coughs> clinics. <coughs> And the question is, how, how, and also if some technologies can directly go into the clinics, into hospitals? Well, on the left, you can see one of the detectors of CERN. On the right is a PET machine. Do you see some analogies? Actually, the fun part is that we have the same goals. So, detecting particles, detecting rays, and understanding exactly where they come from. And actually, there are examples of some technologies used already in medical field. For example, this project, clear pet, um, crystal clear. Yeah. Oh, crystal clear is the name. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, just, it's just a name. It's... <coughs> wow, I love it. <laughs> It's uh, a new detector for uh, um, uh, breast cancer diagnostics. It's much smaller than current big machines. And allows um, a diagnosis only in the, the place where, is, uh, where you have to, without affecting the whole body. So it's much more effective as a, as a resolution and it's much less uh, problematic for the patient. It's already been used in two hospitals in France and in Spain. <coughs> and another one is called Medicis. And it's uh, another kind of sensor. <coughs> that allows x rays, um, diagnostics to be much more um, <coughs> precision, precise. It means they can have a radiography with much less dose and much less um, harm for the patient. And we're working to bring them into the hospitals soon. And then accelerators. So, for accelerators, we're talking about cancer. And nowadays, cancer has two main ways for treating it. Conventional treatments, like surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy, or no conventional. That means that they are still to be tested more. It doesn't mean that they are not scientifically proven, just that we need to work more on that. Actually, radiotherapy is super cool. Because uh, basically it's a beam of x-rays. It goes to inside the body and kill the tumor cell. It's cheap. You don't have to open the body. 
It's super effective in many, many cases. But sometimes there can be problems. I like it. <laughs> and, um, but there can be problems with radiotherapy. <laughs> so already from the 40s they started thinking about alternatives. Uh, this is the only graph I will show you during the presentation. So I'm sorry already. But I'm an engineer, so sometimes I need So here you can see the amount of energy that is left inside the body and the distance inside the body traveled by the particles or the rays. So here you have the energy registered inside the body. Yes, Количество энергии, которое будет передано вашему телу, насколько вы получите облучение, а по нижнему вы видите глубину, как глубоко how depth is going. Как глубоко она сможет проникнуть. Соответственно, I like that you know it. So you can see I'm not saying bullshit. You know also. So when we have photons, X-rays, you see that they basically go through all the body. And they lead the majority of the energy at the beginning. So if I have a tumor in the deep, deep seated tumor, I will actually give only this dose and give this to healthy cells. I will give this to the healthy Well, if I use charged particles, like protons or carbon ions, they have an amazing property. They travel through the body almost without giving energy, almost without interacting. And at a certain distance, that is dependent on the energy at which I accelerate them. So at this time, they stop. They stop and they release their own energy, destroying what they find there. Yes, Они не, а, не передают ничего коже, но уничтожают опухоль именно той глубине, на которой мы Да. So, for example, I can treat a tumor behind the lungs without affecting so much the lungs. So, здесь uh, на слайде изображена опухоль, и как это звучит, проходит сквозь тело и попадает на опухоль. And without affecting the bone marrow and the, the spine behind. So for certain kind of tumors, like eye tumor, brain tumor, so in, in sensible areas, or uh, when it's deeply inside the body, or for children, they are much more sensible to radiation for secondary cancer. These are actually much better. And CERN is working on this. So in the 90s, we designed a center 
for particle therapy. We project our center for therapy. And there is a center in Italy working with some technologies. And another one being built in Austria. Okay. And here you can see that Europe is quite advanced in this kind of treatments. Is advanced in this kind of technology. And it's a website explaining a bit how a particle a particle accelerator center works. So you will receive some of the slides. And you can uh, you can get it. <coughs> If they don't send you, write to me, I will send you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a, I mean, if we have more time, I will make you see the, the video that we made, at least the video, but I think it's more interesting if we speak about what Sam can do for you. Зайти на этот сайт, это как виртуальное, виртуальное путешествие, вы можете посмотреть видео, картинки, и если вам интересно еще чем занимается центр, вы можете задавать ему вопросы. So basically, you saw that one of our missions is education. То есть, как вы видите, одна из наших основных целей это образование. So, training people that work at CERN. То есть, лечение людей, над которыми работают в CERN. But also doing outreach, doing communication. Но также это и общение, и передача нашего опыта и знаний. So what we want is that people are aware of science, aware that science is cool, and aware that what we do is also useful. Да, то есть теперь вы можете понимать, чем чем конкретно там занимаются люди, чем они интересуются. So that's why among the many programs we have, we have also a teacher program. У них есть очень много программ, также программы для учителей. So the idea is to make children, uh, teachers come into CERN <coughs> and make them totally... Huh? Really? Yes. I'm here to present this. And to make them totally inside the CERN atmosphere. So learning new things about science and physics. Knowing about the applications of our technologies, meeting some people, but also meeting between each, you and between each other. And actually our goal is to make you our ambassadors. Not just ambassadors of CERN, but ambassadors of science. So we have two kind of programs. One is the national teacher program. So like five days almost at CERN. With programs and, and teaching in your own language. Another one is high school teacher program in summer. So we come for three weeks at CERN with people from all over the world. And I can tell you it's a big fun for them. Last year we had a lot of fun. <laughs> As you can see, last, last year we had 117 people from Ukraine coming. Now the boring part, information. <laughs> so in Ukraine we work with the Minor Academy of Science of Ukraine. 
And we already um, decided the dates of our next event. So we have already the dates for our next event. So 4 9 December of this year. And you have a name. <laughs> I'm not dealing unfortunately with this program. But you can call Alexander Duro. Right to start talking. I mean he knows about this. I've been in contact not to him. I was in contact with one of his colleagues. So he knows that you will probably receive in the next days some stalking emails. You can blame me. You can blame me. <laughs> and uh, also other opportunities. So we have a competition for schools in which you can design your own ex particle physics experiment. And if you get selected, you can come at CERN and perform it. Then we have a kind of, uh, of workshop called School Lab. <coughs> In which you can, uh, let's say, learn how to build your own particle detector. And otherwise, you can simply come and visit us. And I told you about the three pillars we have at CERN. Yeah, how many one for us? Yes, three stall bar. Fourth. And this is the fourth, actually, my favorite. So, the fourth is people. Sun is an amazing place, not just because we have the biggest particle accelerator in the world or whatever. It's because we have amazing people working there, they are passionate, they really love what they do, and they really like also to, to share with others. And I think for me it's... it's oh, yeah. <laughs> I started feeling emotional. <laughs> so it's a place where people really believe in what they do and there is a lot of passion. So if you come, and please ask to come, if you can. You, you have the opportunity to feel it. Thank you. Thank you.